the Carrier Dome name change is coming. Good evening, I'm Matt Mulcahy. A report from an online sports business publication says an announcement is coming in the next few weeks that Syracuse University Stadium will get a new name. Sports Director Tommy Sledek is in now with more on the Dome's future. Tommy. Matt, it's safe to say this was the talk of the town this Friday. After more than 40 years, Carrier is out. JMA Wireless is in. It's a tech manufacturing company building a huge campus right here in Syracuse, and now it looks like they'll get their name on the dome. So a sports business outlet called Sportico broke the story today, reporting that Syracuse University and Carrier came to a settlement over the naming rights. So yeah, 42 years ago, Carrier paid SU $2.75 million for the naming rights to the dome in perpetuity. That legal term means forever, not anymore. Nowadays, naming rights to stadiums go for tens of millions of dollars and have time limits so that the stadium owners can go you know, shop around for more money to keep or find a new sponsor. Syracuse University has been fighting that quote forever deal with Carrier and now Sportico reporter Abin Novi Williams told me that an agreement is in place to drop Carrier and add JMA Wireless to Syracuse's iconic dome. And Matt, he did mention to me today that he said he would be he would not be surprised if that 2.7 million that Syracuse got from Carrier 40 years ago would be an annual thing, if not more money than that. And SU did just get a 20 million in safe funding to complete phase two of renovations on the dome, which includes new seats and event space and wireless 5G upgrades, courtesy of JMA Wireless. So we'll more on that coming up in sports. Teen-year-old accused of bringing a loaded gun to Red Jacket High School was back in Ontario County Court this afternoon for a preliminary hearing. 13 Wham's Carla Rogner has been in the courtroom. She's live at the courthouse now with what happened last hour. Carla? Yeah, the teen's case is actually being heard in Youth Park Courts. So we weren't allowed inside, but we did speak with the district attorney afterwards. He told us today Judge Brian Dennis found reasonable belief to continue hearing this case. The teen, who we are not identifying because of his age, is accused of bringing a loaded gun to school in early April. The principal at the school was able to disarm him. The teen is charged with criminal possession of a weapon, and he remains in custody. District Attorney Jim Ritz says the teen had intent to use the gun. We continue still to this day to investigate other aspects of the case. Um, certainly there's um, the aspects are up uh, as it relates to the background, history, um, and this, you know, this young man's situation. And so um, we continue in that while we continue hearing from the public defender's office and for his, from his attorney's office and, and uh, we'll continue to uh, work toward what is appropriate as a disposition. And the teen is charged as a juvenile offender, which means he could be tried as an adult. The DA tells us that decision will come at a later date. Putting one foot in front of the other, a Greece woman relearning how to walk after she was hit by a car in January. Ever since I got cleared to bear weight, I cannot get off my feet. Christine Harris still has a way to go in her recovery after being hit by a car while she was snow blowing her driveway in January. Good afternoon, I'm Doug Amblidge. Ginny is off today. Last time we spoke to Christine was in February when she returned home after three weeks in the hospital. Chase Howell spoke with her today on where she is in her recovery and how she's doing. We met Christine Harris in February, wheelchair bound after being struck by a car in January while snowblowing her driveway on Ridgeway Avenue in Greece, breaking her pelvis, femur, and several other bones in her legs. Now that wheelchair since empty. As of last Friday, I was cleared to bear weight, so I'm currently walking with crutches and I'm doing home PT for about a month. Christine says she can't stay off her feet now that she's cleared, even jumping up to do the things some people hate, like washing dishes. I'm a cook and I really miss doing that, but now that I'm up and about, you know, I'm starting to go towards being normal again and going back to the things I enjoy. But the journey has been far from easy, relying on crutches and a walker to get around her home and doing countless hours of physical therapy. I'm a lot better than before, you know, now that I can walk and I'm just focused a lot on like exercises and stuff. Um, my walk isn't perfect. You know, I still wobble a lot and 
working on exercise. It's weird kind of teaching yourself how to walk again. Her medical bills at Strong and Unity alone totaling up to $200,000 with more bills on the way. I actually had to send all my stuff to my auto insurance first and then once that's exhausted, it'll go over to my medical and the maximum out of pocket I'll pay is $5,000. Despite the pain and the medical bills, her eye is still on the prize, getting married. We've been engaged for so long and it took a lot to get to that point and I don't want this to set me back at all. Chase Howell, 13 Wham News. And Christine tells us the case is still open, that hit and run, but officers are no longer investigating because they don't have the evidence, although they are asking anyone with tips to give them a call, the Greece Police Department.